Okay, so this is Poodle Feet 101. This is set on the 30 setting. This is a wall arco. It's my favorite because it has a removable battery where the other ones do not. I've got two batteries. You take one out, put it in the charger, and put the next one in. The other ones have batteries that are already built in, and I prefer, because I do a lot of poodles, I prefer to do the one with the batteries that are interchangeable. So, I'm going to turn her around. You can see the back of her foot. You see that? Okay. I'm going to shave right there, just at that little pad. Right at the back of that top, the fat pad at the base of the foot. And then we're going to scoop this out. And we're only going to that little line we just made at the base. See that? And then we're going to spread the little toes out like that and get all that stuff in between. Get backwards. Get everything off the bottom. Makes less work for you to get stuff on top. See how I'm manipulating her little toes with my thumb? nice and clean on the bottom. Now the reason I did that is because now I'm going to turn her around and you can literally see if you put your finger right there the base of that pad you can see where your finger is that's where you want that cuff to be in the front. So you go take the whole top off go right to where your finger is and stop. Don't scoop up, don't scoop out, don't go like that just go right to where you see your finger is and stop. And take everything off the top. Move the hair out of your way when you got furry feet. And now you know right where your line is. Everything you can get off the top of the foot. side to that line, side to that line, and now you can start going in between the toes. You use your forefinger on whatever hand you're not clipping with and use that to manipulate the toes. See? Hold the foot nice and firm so they feel secure. And scoop in next to that toe and out next to that toe, or you can just do one side each toe and then you can turn around and go back whichever is more comfortable for you I tend to do both depending on the dog and really pay attention to where your blade is going watch your blade and not the dog that's one of the biggest mistakes that people make when they first start doing it is they're looking at the dog and not their blade so they can't figure out where their blade is going. I know that sounds silly, but that's what we do. Okay, so now we've done that. We've got all these little kind of fuzzy hairs that kind of still stick out on the bottom. If you flip your blade over so that the cutter's on the inside, you can gently skim those off right down the side of the nail and get those extra little fuzzies off. And turn it around. And just real gentle go down the inside of the nail. That takes all those extra little furry things off. And then you can kind of see the extra stuff you missed. I'll just clean it up a little bit. I'm real picky about my poodle feet. Oh, there's some more. Oh, go on. Nice little poodle foot. Now what I do with the cuff is I take my comb and I comb it all down, all the way around. So it's all sticking down. 
and then I take my hand and I pull that cuff all the way down further than I want it to be because if I leave it up here I'm going to take off too much of this hair with what I'm fixing to do so I take it down a little further than I want it to be and then I take my clipper and I go right up next to my hand all the way around and see how you have your thumb against that back pad right too. so I'm still not losing that line mm -hmm. and then you'll see when I let it go it's gonna pop up a little bit but since I pulled it down farther than I wanted it to be it doesn't pull up too far and pretty much like you could you could almost leave it that way if you wanted to and then if I see anything else sticking down I just come back and do it again and she's pretty furry so sometimes you have to do it twice but to me that's faster than trying to scissor around the bottom of the foot and that gives you a nice little cuff at the bottom you see that from the front? Mm -hmm. Now we're not doing any other scissor work, so it's, well, that's all we're doing today is just the cuffs and the feet. So we'll do another foot in front. I'm turn it around again so you can see the bottom. Pull your thumb all the way down. Get right to that back pad. Just cut it off right there. Everything off the bottom. I'm not going into the pad of the foot yet. Just to skim everything off the bottom so you can see what you're doing. Now, if you're doing this regular, of course, this isn't necessary. But if it's been three or four weeks and you got a hair machine like this one, then you need to get that hair out of the way. So now we have our line right there, the back pad. And we're going to open it up and get all that stuff from in between off the bottom first. I find doing the bottom first really helps because then pretty much all, you ha all you're taking off is stuff from the top when you turn them around. And usually what I do is I go like I'm going to do all four feet. I go around and do all the pads first and then I do the, the actual poodle foot. That's just a little bit more efficient when you're a groomer. That finger right there, the base of that pad where you shaved up to, now you know where you're going. Go right to your finger and stop. That way you don't make a peg leg. And you don't shave it up too far, like almost to the ankle. And you got pedal pushers. Some people like that. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. I just don't like it. Personal opinion. Now I can spread all these little toes. Uh oh, we lost our light. Continuing on. We lost our extra light, so we'll see what this looks like. It may not be bad, because we did it without extra light last time. All the way around each nail. And then flip your clipper over and go right along the edge and you can do this with um, you can do this with a 10 or a 15 blade it's just a, it just it's a teeny bit more difficult because those blades are a little bit larger but it is it is definitely doable I was taught years and years ago nothing shorter than a 10 blade and now since I've been showing I do 30s I do 40s on some of them not the white or the cream because they tend to get irritated real easy. Nice clean little poodle foot. Press it all down. Pull it all down farther than I want. Almost to that first knuckle. If you're worried, pull it all the way down that far and do the first one and then look at it. That way you know you're not getting it up too short. I missed a fuzzy. 
I need the other from the back here. Pull it all the way down. And just take that straight off, like right next to your hand. a nice little poodle cuff. That's my fast and easy trick. Of course you can do it with scissors. We can do that on the back feet. I want to do that. That's just my little quick and easy way to do it. So we're going to clean out the pad just like we did on the front. Now the main thing, especially with like, you know, a lot of your pet dogs are going to have bad knees and stuff. One of the biggest things I'm always fussing at other groomers about when I teach is don't pull the leg out this way. Their leg doesn't necessarily want to go that way. It wants to go this way because that's how they move. So if you can get behind them and pull the leg straight back, that's more comfortable for the dog and they're going to struggle less. I get a lot of comments. Everybody says, oh, the dogs are so good. You you know, you really need to do dogs that are, you know, they're not so great about it. Well, if you handle them properly, a lot of dogs will be a lot better for you. I'm just saying. Um, if you're not pulling those legs in directions they're not meant to go, like I'll watch groomers and they'll be trying to trim this leg and they're going to, and they're pulling this leg out this way. Their leg doesn't go that way. Their leg goes this way and this way. So if you're pulling that leg out this way, it's like somebody pulling your arm behind your back and trying to do something to you. So it's uncomfortable and the dog's going to struggle. I'm going to go ahead and do this other foot, back foot too, since we're back here. This is my normal routine. Right up to the back pad. That fat one right at the top. And then clean all this stuff out. Take everything off the bottom. And then you can turn your dog around. Now if you have, you know, of course if you have like a bigger standard or whatever, you're, you're probably not going to be able to do this so much. But with the toys, it's real super easy for me to stick my whole arm underneath and that's holding her leg in a natural position. With the standard, a lot of times I'll have them sit and then I'll try to do their foot from this direction like this. So again, they're in a natural position, but with the toys and the minis, I can generally get my whole arm around the dog and I can do it in a fairly natural position so I'm not cranking that leg out to the side where it's not supposed to be. I see groomers do this all day long and I think you know, the dog is jumping around and trying to get away from you because you're inadvertently hurting that dog. And that's one of my things that I tell my students all the time is don't do that, especially with the small dogs because you're at a you're at a funny angle from them and if you don't have them up to the height where you can reach them properly, you're even you're cranking their little limbs and stuff out at even worse angles and every small dogs are such a pain well I, I invite you to reassess how you're handling those small dogs and maybe possibly you may be inadvertently without thinking pulling their limbs and their toes or um, even their head at a bad angle for them because they're so small but I've seen groomers do it with big dogs too. We just don't think. And I'm, I'm quite certain I was guilty of that early on in my career when I didn't quite understand how to handle. And I think that's something that's um, sorely missing in our industry is how to handle dogs. And this one in particular has bad knees. And so her other knee is a real problem for her. I'm doing that cuff like I told you I was going to do. Right up next to my hand. Um, her other knee in particular is bad. And so again, see how I try to make sure that foot and that knee are in a more normal position. 
for what she would normally do when she's moving and when she's not uncomfortable. The first few times I groomed her, she was all over the place. She didn't like anything, and I think it was because she was anticipating me doing that. Um, and you may find that happens a lot with your pet clients, so the new, particularly the new clients, um, because they're used to having that done. They anticipate you doing it, and so therefore, they're already struggling with you and you have to be patient and teach them that you're not going to do that. So now this other foot on the other side, because I'm right handed, what I do is I generally try to teach them to sit and then I extend this foot out this way and I lean over the top of their body. Now she's still not used to me doing that because I'm kind of uh, new at grooming her. This is the only the first few times I've groomed her. So she keeps wanting to stick her face over here. But in general, if you keep doing what I did, see, I didn't really talk to her. I didn't tell her, oh, it's okay, baby. I didn't schmutz over her, but I wasn't rough with her either. If you notice, all I did was I just insisted on what I was doing in dog language. And in dog language, that was me putting my hand up there and just pushing her face away. And I didn't do it roughly, I just gently pushed her away, like I don't want you to do that. So sometimes I think that is a lot more effective than the no, no, stop, you know, get out of the way, push, you know, trying to manipulate the dog all around and fussing at them with your voice. They don't understand that. All they understand is that you're upset with them. They don't know why you're upset, they don't know what they're doing wrong. Dogs have to be shown what they're doing wrong. And a lot of times that's just something else you do with your body to try to help them understand that you don't want them to do whatever it is that they're doing. And yelling no or stop or um, getting frustrated just makes it worse. Because all the dog understands is that you're upset with them. That's it. That's all they get. So, off my soapbox about handling, but that's a big deal for me, especially since I have toys now. I see uh, what people do that makes those dogs act up, and then, you know, have you ever been in a grooming shop where, like, you'll get a dog from another groomer that's like, oh, that dog's such a pain, it's like constantly giving me a hard time, and then you groom it and it's fine. Well... It could be just, you know, one little thing like that that you're doing differently. You're not, you know, accidentally in an, or inadvertently hurting that dog. Whereas, you know, the other groomer is is pulling the feet out or, you know, being too fast and too rough or whatever. And making it more difficult for the dog. So I invite you to second guess what you're doing if you're having trouble with a dog that you're grooming, stop and assess what you're doing. So that's little poodle feet. And then the cuffs are e super easy. That's a great easy way for a new person to start doing around the bottoms and doing the feet. And then the rest of it is just practice. That's just how it is. You just have to keep doing it over and over and over again. It's not, it's not going to be perfect the first few times you do it. And it's not, you know, and it could be a little bit of a struggle because you're not used to it. The dog's not used to you doing it. And, you know, they feel that you're nervous. And so sometimes it's, um, it's just a matter of you know, settling in and getting more comfortable. And if you feel more confident, then the dog will be more confident and there will be less of a struggle.